Hello, welcome back to another Fallout 4 tutorial video. Today I'm going to be covering Creation Kit, using it to create a hollow tape with the terminal menu. I'm also going to be having uh, using a global variable to set up conditions so that one option is displayed when another is not, and being able to toggle them, and setting up a secondary sub-menu. Uh, to get started, we're going to have to go ahead and create our terminal. That's the actual menu, so that'll be down under World Objects, Terminal. I'm going to go ahead and make a copy of a default one. doesn't matter if you use a wall terminal or uh, a sitting desk. The 3D model is irrelevant for the Pip-Boy menus and if you're loading it as a holotape. So I'll go ahead and give it a name. And hit OK. We're going to go ahead and create a new form. So say yes, and then we're going to have to reload that one that we just made. We can give it a header text if we want. Uh, that will always show up at the very top of uh, our terminal uh, and the whole menu system. So if it has submenus, the header text of the main menu will show up. So I'm going to go ahead and create one just so that when uh, I show it in game at the very end of the video, uh, you'll get a reference point and see what it, where it shows up as well as the welcome text. A body text is optional. You don't have to put one. Uh, if you do and you create multiple options, you'll have to set conditions to make it not display um, and it'll go in order. It'll try for conditions on number one. If it comes out as true, then the first one gets displayed. If you create a second uh, option, then the second one will get displayed. I'll go ahead and create one just so you can see where uh, it actually shows up. Actually, we don't need to capitalize that. Oops, line one. And then we're going to go ahead and create some uh, menu items. I'm going to go ahead and make four of them. Uh, for our condition swaps, I'm going to force a redraw because we're going to have a papyrus fragment uh, which sets a variable value and then redraws the menu so that the conditions get reevaluated for the options. So I'll go ahead and set that up for both of these. Uh, item three, oops. we'll just set up for some display text. That way, when you choose it, it will just show whatever you type in the box here. Uh, to get back from the display, you'll either hit tab or hit enter on the keyboard, or if you're using a controller, then that'll whatever the keys are for going back uh, up a menu will take you back. For a four, this is where our sub menu is going to be. Uh, we'll create that in a little bit, but for now, I'm just creating the holder for it. And I think that's it for this one. Yeah. So now we're going to go ahead and create our holotape object, which is going to be up under items, for items, and then under holotape. Again, I'm going to make a copy of a default one. So the common holotape is pretty basic. And we're just going to rename that tutorial holotape. Hit enter. We're going to create a new form, and then we'll come back and edit and make changes to it. The reason I'm making a copy rather than just creating a new one is so I don't have to fill out the model uh, and the pickup sounds. If you don't care about those, then you don't need to worry about it. So we're going to call this tutorial hollow tape. Actually, I'm going to create some funky characters so this gets sorted to the very top of the menu since my test save has a bunch of miscellaneous items already. We're going to set a terminal. This is going to point to the terminal that we actually created for our menu. So we pick our terminal main menu. And now our actual tape is created. Since I'm going to craft this at a chemistry bench for demonstrative purposes, I'm going to create a recipe and then go and edit said recipe. 
And like I said, I'm going to use the chemistry bench. So I picked the right bench for that. And I'm going to put it under the utility category. I'm not going to worry about any required uh, material items since this is just for a demonstration. And now our, our basic first level menu is finished. I'm going to go back into our terminal here. Actually, I'm going to create our secondary subterminal first. Uh, so we'll go back to our defaults, make another copy of the menu. Make that menu two. Make a new form. And this will give us our sub menu option one. And we'll give it a go back option. Uh, this is not necessary since we can just hit tab and go back up one menu. Uh, if we had, say, three or four levels deep, you can use a go back uh, and choose return to top level. It'll take you all the way back to the very beginning. Uh, welcome text and uh, header text on the sub menus is irrelevant because they don't get shown. Uh, actually, I'll go ahead and put a body text on here. Body text from sub menu. So you can see uh, how that shows up. And that's good. Now we're going to go actually attach that to our main menu. So we come back down to our sub menu and pick our sub menu. Oops, menu 2. And we're going to say OK. So now we've all actually let's go ahead and save since Creation Kit tends to crash quite often. Tutorial, eh, don't use underscores. Uh, hollow tape. And now we're going to go ahead and create our uh, variables for the conditions. Actually, we only need one. And that is somewhere up here. I can never remember where that's at. There we go. Under miscellaneous global, uh, we're going to just go ahead and manually create one real quick. Global toggle. I'm going to copy that to the clipboard since I don't want to have to type it all over again a couple of times, which are going to be coming up. Default value, whatever you want, you can set it up however your conditions are going to be set up. And then we go back into our terminal. So the main menu is the one that has the conditions. Uh, we're going to go ahead and add the condition. So the condition is going to be get global value. We point to our tutorial global. And since item one, we're going to choose to make that equal to zero because that's the default. Uh, so now when it's equal to zero, this option will be shown. We're going to make another condition for the same uh, variable, but this one's going to be equal to one. So now when it's equal to one, item two is shown. When it's equal to zero, then uh, item one is shown. At this point, we haven't set anything up to actually change the variable. So if we just saved it and entered game, it's only going to show us item 1, 3, and 4, no item 2, and there's no way to get that. So the next thing we need to do is set up a papyrus fragment. And that's going to allow us to set our variable. Uh, since there is no file created yet, uh, we can't easily add properties. Things go haywire if you do. We're going to create a dummy file just putting a comment in and hit compile. So now that gives uh, our file. Now we can go ahead and create a form, or create using a form. This is why I copied it to the clipboard, so we can easily get our property name. Uh, I'm going to take off the default P that it adds on the properties, so I have just the same name as my editor ID, so that I can easily uh, say OK that it created it. So I can easily just copy and paste and set the value. Since our value is already zero, when we choose option one, we want it to set the value to one and then force the redraw. And then we're going to come back down here. Since we've already created a fragment, uh, and the papyrus fragment script is going to be the same for all of the fragments that go on this terminal, I don't need to create a second one. And if I have properties, it's already there because it already has the fragment script. So I can just go here and set value to zero because I'm going to toggle back to zero. And I'm going to hit compile just for good measure. So now option one, 
uh, forces a redraw, sets the value to 1, only shown when it is currently 0. Option 2 does exactly the opposite. Forces redraw, sets it to 0 when the value is 1. And we're done. So we can go ahead and hit save. So we've already we've created our main menu, we've set up some entries, we've created our hollow tape. I've made a recipe to get it easily. We also have our global variable for conditions so that we have a toggle system. And we've also got a second level menu with two options on it. Actually, let's go back to that for a minute. I wanted to point something out. So on option one, actually I'm just going to go ahead and put in a response text here. Option one response. So you can see where that shows up. Uh, it's not going to actually do anything because we don't have a submenu chosen. We're not returning to the top, we're not forcing redraw, and we're not displaying any text. So nothing really actually happens except it shows option one and then doesn't do anything. As for option for uh, the second menu option, we have go back. If we choose that, it just returns to the top level. So hit OK, save. I'm going to go ahead and activate that and launch the game. I'll see you in just a second. And now we're back in the game, uh, right here conveniently at a chemistry bench. So let's go ahead and go back down to our utility menu, create our hollow tape, and let's go test it. And of course, I chose the wrong option. So it's going to go at the very end. Which gives us our header up here, the welcome text, our two lines of body text for the main menu. And as you can see, item 1 only shows up because we haven't swapped our condition check. Item 3 and item 4. So if I choose item 1, that just redraws the screen after setting our variable. So now the condition toggles to the other option. You can hit it again and it goes back. Item 3 just shows us our text. And then we have to hit tab to go back. And then 4 goes to our submenu. Which you can now see that the body text changed, but it still has the header and the welcome text. Or if you go back in the video, you'll see that I did not set a header or welcome text. Plus it says it's for the main menu here anyway. Uh, if I choose submenu option 1, it just says option 1 response, and if we give it enough time, it will come back and just redraw. Uh, going back up a menu, and if we were to choose go back, it would go back. Uh, and that takes care of the video. If you have any questions, go ahead and comment. I'll just do my best to answer. Thanks.